Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to Technode Firmacraft. So, I've been doing a lot of work breeding the bees, and I've been trying to get a few more of them going, but I am getting really tired of having to come over here constantly and check for the impregnated frames, and dealing with the queens and princesses and drones and everything like that. And I've got several hives here that are producing these common drones. And so what I would like to do is automate the production of these common drones. So uh, what I'm going to be doing, and I'll probably do it for the forest ones as well, or the meadows, and I can start doing it for some of these others in here. I've got the wintry ones, the modest, marshy, uh, tropical. Uh, I'm going to save these Valiant for a little while because they have a special purpose that I want to use them for. And I have the drones, but I have no princesses at the moment. So it's kind of a tough thing to ensure that I get a princess out of that. But so what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be utilizing Steve's factory manager to do this. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have our apiarist pipe. Uh, that I would use normally. So instead we're going to have to use a factory manager. So if we look in here, we have the factory manager block. Now this is not too expensive except for this block of redstone. So we need a wrought iron double sheet, block of redstone, a red or blue steel chisel, and then it looks like pretty much any hammer will do. Then we need a piston and some smooth stone. So I have all of that with the exception of the red or blue steel chisel. The other thing that we are going to need to do what we we're planning here is some inventory cables. Now these aren't bad at all. We get eight for this recipe. We get or use one redstone, a couple of iron, some glass, and some gold. So uh, what I'm going to have to do is make up that uh, chisel and uh, then we'll make those and we'll start looking at, well first we're going to have to move some of the apiaries and we'll start looking at what we can do to automate those beehives. So I will be back in just a little bit. So I've gathered everything up that uh, we need to make this stuff, or at least I hope I've got everything. So first off we're going to make the uh, factory manager itself, which is two smooth stone here in the bottom, block redstone in the center, um, oh, we need to make a piston. Well, I thought I had everything, but I guess not. So we'll just go ahead and grab a piece of wood there. And we'll need uh, four cobblestone of some kind. And actually, um, I don't think this is enough, is it? So, no, that's only going to make two planks. So let's go ahead and grab one more. And uh, we'll get two more planks, and yeah, we'll have an extra one, but that's okay. So then we need, oh, we're going to need one more redstone. Darn it. So we'll grab one more redstone. And now we'll go with a redstone, wrought iron, planks, cobblestone, piston. Okay, so piston. We got those, the redstone, and then we need... The wrought iron double sheets, the chisel, and oh, don't, I don't have the hammer on me. Yeah, geez. Okay, well, let's go ahead and go grab the hammer. So, one more time. I'm going to have this recipe memorized by the time that this is all done. And then we need our hammer, and there we go. Inventory manager. So next up, we are going to make the inventory cables. And yeah, that's pretty simple stuff there. None of these recipes have been changed, so we need uh, weighted pressure plates. Those, uh, what else did we need? Whoops, wrong one. Iron on the sides, and then glass. So that'll give us some, fact or some cables, and that allows us to uh, have this one factory manager do more. So now what we're going to do, we're going to come over here and see how many of these bees are actually ready to go. So this one is, so we'll go ahead and take that. Uh, these guys are. Uh, that one needs to stay here. 
Uh, these guys are ready to go. Mm, different, different, and these are different. Those are the ones that I'm trying to get the four out of. Hmm. So this one still has not quite made it, so we're not going to bother with that. And actually, we could take a this common princess, but I don't know for sure how the system will function with that. So um, the last thing that we need is a chest. So actually, I need another log. And we're just going to make a white cedar chest, no problem. And now we're going to head over here and this is where we're going to place our bees so got a little space here and I think this would be a good place for them so oh, I forgot to grab the extra apiaries so let's see we have three princesses so we need at least three apiaries oh well wonder of wonders that's how many we have so we have our three apiaries and we're gonna go ahead and just place those down here right beside each other Right behind them, we are going to drop the inventory cables. And then over here, we are going to drop, oops, the factory manager. Okay, so next to the factory manager, we are going to drop our chest. And this will take care of everything. So now the first thing we're going to do is we are going to drop all of our bees in here. Okay, now we'll come in here and we are going to create a trigger. You know, if you're unfamiliar with uh, Steve's Factory Manager, this isn't going to be an in-depth tutorial on how to do this stuff, but you may be able to kind of figure it out. And if you want to see more, I can put a link to the uh, places where I did some of the Steve's Factory Manager stuff in uh, Crash Landing. So our interval on this, we are going to go on a 10 second interval. Uh, and our connection is going to be on the interval. Now we need an input, and we're going to set our inventory to the white cedar chest. We're going to connect this together, and uh, we're going to uh, white list. And actually, we need to pull out one princess and one drone. And we are going to input white listed, and you can go dot .inv to pull up the items that are in your inventory. So we will take the common drone and the common princess. And actually, no, we will take uh, one of each. And actually, we can do a fuzzy detection on that. But uh, we won't worry about that just yet. We're going to just remove this one. So uh, delete. We're going to take the drone first. And I keep pressing escape to get out of that, and it closes. Okay, so that's going to input. Now we're going to output, and we are going to take the first apiary, and you'll see it says one block away, two blocks away, three blocks away. That's how we know which one is which. So we're going to take the first one, and we are going to take the item. We're going to blacklist nothing. And so that will try to then output to that uh, apiary, and we should see, yeah, so we've got 12 drones in there. That's not what we want. So we need to come in here to our uh, one here. Eh, cancel. We want to specify amount one. So now we'll see one drone in here. And when we drop more in, it will continue to try to place them in. So what we need to do now is we need a condition. Oh, RF input, RF output. These are new things. RF condition. Okay, so we can use this to transfer RF. Interesting. So somewhere around here, there's a condition. Condition. Okay, so inventory. We're going to take that first apiary, and we're going to say... Uh, if any, and then we're going to go dot .inv again, and I don't have a drone on me, so I will take a drone. So once again, if any, 
dot inv if any drones then we are going to we're going to put this in here so now it's going to check if there is a drone if there is not a drone we're going to output that drone to there and actually what we should do we're going to break this one we're going to go here if that's false we're going to input into the or from the chest into the apiary now this stuff is pretty confusing I know so I need to duplicate that for each one of the apiaries and uh, now if I pull these out now and we let this run for a little bit and actually we can change our trigger interval to one second so that we can see it in action a little easier so we'll see there's one drone in here and it will not put in another drone so if we pull that drone out we see another one goes in immediately pull that one out another one and repeatedly it will just keep putting drones into that uh, apiary so now we need to do the same thing so we're going to uh, create a condition we're going to check this same inventory and we're going to say if any uh, dot inv so if any princess and uh, we need one more thing here so we're gonna have to throw the princess in and get a queen so we already have the princess and then we will go here and go once again dot inv to pull up our inventory and we'll go with the queen so if we have a princess or a queen so if either of those is in the hive if there is not one in the hive yeah we need to create an input and we're going to hook to that input here because that's getting annoying and we're going to create an output and this will be just like it was before so we're going to input from the chest uh, whitelist and I don't know if we can go uh, princess this probably won't work because yeah we don't have them all available so we need one of our princesses and actually these two are ignoble stock whereas this one's pristine I wonder if that's gonna cause a problem it probably will so um, we'll go dot inv and we're gonna input a princess and I think what we're gonna do we are going to instead of precise we're gonna go I think NBT independent detection should actually work just fine or we might need we'll just go with fuzzy detection I think so the output then we need to set to the apiary and we'll blacklist nothing so is this going to output a uh, princess well we need to sleep yes I want to sleep on that So yeah, this stuff can be kind of confusing. Sometimes you have to track down little errors here and there. So somewhere we're having an issue, and I think it has to do with... Uh, oh, well, that could be a reason. So we need to create a flow, and instead of uh, a collector, we're going to do with a split. Yeah, once again, we're going to go into here. And then we'll have one of these go here, one of them go here, and now we'll see we have a princess in there. So what I want to do, it will put in a drone right away. I'm going to pull that queen out, and okay, it put in another princess. So we'll have to do that with all of them. And also I need to get some flowers over here for these guys so that they will do some things. But I'm going to do a little bit of work here, and when I get some of this figured out, I'll bring you guys back, kind of show you what I've got set up. And uh, this will be a, a very nice, neat, clean system. Uh, we should have all of our combs and everything put directly into the 
uh, chest, and I'm also going to put a better barrel over here for the frames so that we can have a whole bunch of frames available, and whenever a frame becomes unavailable in the hive, it will put a new one back in. So, uh, yep, I'm going to get that, try, or try to get that figured out, and I will be back once I've got that all programmed out and uh, got something to show you. Well, this is working really good for putting in princesses and drones and retrieving the honeycombs and uh, princesses and drones that are produced, but I can't get the impregnated frames to work. So I made a part here to uh, uh, input from the barrel some impregnated frames. and. Uh, then I have it just putting into the third hive, but if I pull a frame out of here, nothing happens. And if I pull a frame out of here, nothing happens. And if I pull a frame out of here, nothing happens. So I don't know if there's just no way that Steve's factory manager will recognize that these frames are here. And I guess I didn't check to see if I pulled the top one out. Mm, no. But uh, the breeding portion of it's working great. We currently have 13 drones and 21 honeycombs, so all of that's working good. So I can just kind of leave this here. Now you'll see this one here has drones and a princess in it because I've got that set on a 30 second timer. So we actually got to see the uh, machine do everything right there. That's pretty awesome, you know. So uh, I'll be able to just let this run and every once in a while I can come by and put in some frames if I want to. But we'll be able to have tons of honeycomb and drones here. And I've got this all set up for uh, fuzzy detection. So I could do this with literally any of my princesses and drones. And I could use them for breeding as well because I can set it for precise detection as well. So I'm just going to leave this uh, better barrel out here. I'll probably just delete this portion because, well, it's not working. And also I found out that I could simplify things a lot. You can see here on the retriever, I have my uh, timer. Then all that I did is I selected all the hives and said to take common drones, honeycombs, and common princesses. And of course these are all on fuzzy detection. So, you know, it will take any of these, any drones, any princesses, and any combs out of these hives, and then it just dumps it into the chest. Now each one of these is a for one hive. I've got a splitter here on the top. It checks for the drone. If there isn't a drone, it grabs one from the chest and puts it into the hive. Same thing with the queen. If there's no queen or princess in the, uh, in the hive, it'll grab a princess out of the chest and put it into the hive. So I've done that for all three of the hives here. I've got room for a few more here, if I so decide to do. But uh, yeah, that's gonna work really good. It'll get us tons of stuff. And we'll get uh, all those common drones. We'll be able to start breeding those and getting our cultivated drones. Now, speaking of the cultivated drones, I'm gonna drop these in here. The cultivated drones, uh, in this one, we have purebred cultivated drones now. So I'm probably going to uh, see about setting up another, I could, well for that matter, I could even set up on that same uh, hive setup to run the cultivated ones, but I might just set up another factory manager to do the cultivated drones now. But uh, I'm going to probably take a few of these, or at least one of them, and I'm going to go ahead and try to start breeding one of these meadows into a cultivated. So uh, if we look at the uses, whoops, I uh, didn't get it in time. If we look at the uses on the cultivated ones, if we combine them with a common, we'll get the noble. We combine them with a noble, we get the majestic. Uh, with a modest, we'll get a sinister. 
but this also occurs in nether biomes which we cannot do so that's unfortunate sinister plus a cultivated gives a fiendish once again in nether biomes uh, cultivated plus tropical uh, in uh, nether biomes gives sinister and uh, diligent plus, plus cultivated gives unwary common plus cultivated gives diligent so uh, we've got yeah, a few things that we can do here so taking them with the uh, regular hive drones shouldn't uh, give us some oddball it should try to give us the cultivated so I'm gonna work on getting some more of those cultivated drones so that we can cross them with the common and we'll get into the next step for the next tier of bees so guys, now that I've got a decent amount of the bee breeding going and automated, I uh, noticed that uh, some people were asking about the quest book. So I went ahead and uh, made up the uh, 27 coke bricks that the next quest in Immersive Engineering was asking for. And uh, yeah, it... Uh, it has no reward it just unlocks the next one and now we have treated wood so wood treated with creosote oil is one of the main ingredients in building immersive engineering machines it may also be useful in building since it is not flammable so to make treated wood planks you know I think we've done this before we just put planks in a ring and put our bottle of creosote in the middle and that makes our creosote planks so um, Okay, do back to the menu. Um, am I missing something here? Treated wood planks, zero of eight. Treated wood planks, there is eight here. Huh. Well, I don't know what's going on with that, guys. So I guess we can't move on with the quest book. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this uh, bottle back here. Now, in order to make those uh, coke oven bricks, I pulled down our coke oven. And before I did that, I filled up all of uh, the creosote into bottles. So we have a huge amount of bottles of creosote oil here. And uh, yeah, I don't think we'll need to be setting up a coke oven again for a little while. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to come over here. Yeah, I've got some treated wood blanks here. And I'm going to drop these uh, coke oven bricks in here. Now I had a couple of the Railcraft coke oven bricks left after I made those. The recipe on these was uh, six of the Railcraft coke oven bricks plus some mortar to get three of the immersive engineering ones. And I think that the rate of return on the immersive engineering coke oven is the same as the Railcraft coke oven. So, yeah, I don't know that there's a benefit to setting it up, but, uh, yeah, eventually we might use up all that creosote oil, so we might need to. And also, I went ahead and refilled my uh, mining drill, and I went and drilled in my coal mine a little bit. What happened to my banana leaves? Um, that's no good. Both of my banana trees have no leaves. Okay, well that stinks, but uh, we are into early spring, and uh, I am hoping here really soon to be able to start planting some things in the garden again. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to uh, check our nutrient levels around here, because uh, certain crops take certain nutrients, and they have to not be planted in the same place year after year so I'm gonna have to figure out how to check the nutrient levels in the garden because uh, yep planting will be coming soon also uh, you know we have all the baby pigs here but uh, I went ahead and killed a cow out in the wild here the other day and I got eight stacks of beef from that so I can only imagine how much pork there is going to be in all of this. So yeah, that's going to be uh, pretty neat when we see all of that. 
So I may have to build myself a building for these animals. You know, obviously, if we're going to have tornadoes coming through this uh, map, we want to make sure that all of this stuff gets covered. So, you know, making some buildings is probably going to be wise now. We need to look at uh, uh, possibly improving our power production because, well, there are plenty of times I still run out. You know, I think we're probably starting to run low right now. I just went out and harvested all my industrial hemp and then I had uh, bee or honeycombs spinning so uh, yeah we use a lot of power but uh, yeah we also have a bit of reserve so but anyway I think that's gonna probably be it for this episode then so uh, if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give a thumbs up uh, you know and I want to say thank you guys for all of the likes and comments that you've been giving all the suggestions and letting me know things that you know you know that that really helps me out and it makes it more enjoyable for everybody uh, and also we will be probably having a 100 subsi subscriber special here very soon because uh, yeah we're getting lots of new people watching the the channel so be looking forward to that and uh, on that note if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe you know that really gives me a lot of motivation knowing that you guys are enjoying the stuff enough to uh, say hey I want to watch this guy some more so uh, yep I will see you next time bye